together today to worship. And as we sing a song like this, I do pray that each and every one here does love you, does know you as Lord and Savior. If there's anyone that doesn't, Father, I pray that they'll be touched by your word, they'll be touched by the words of the song, and that, Father, their hearts will be open to receive prayer. I thank you, Lord, for each one that is here. Be with those that aren't able to be with us this morning. We know we have some sick. We know we have some traveling. Bless them, watch over them wherever they are. Bring them back home safely. In my son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In your bulletin, in the bottom of the page, you'll notice just a few announcements that are going to be taking place this week and also coming up in June as well. Uh, this is the last full week, uh, last week of school here in St. Tammany Parish. This coming Friday will be the last day uh, in St. Tammany Parish, and that's only a half a day for all the students, so be aware of that. So there's one more week left to school. May 30th, of course, is Memorial Day, and of course, prior to that, the Sunday and the Saturday and Friday is Memorial Weekend. Uh, it's considered one of the busiest um, holiday times where people start traveling and going out of town and taking vacation and everything. So <clears throat> that's May 30th. Uh, June the 1st starts our hurricane season, so be aware of that. Make preparations uh, such, whatever you have to do. Uh, June 5th is Pentecost. And the 19th of June is, of course, Father's Day. So you can remember all the fathers on the 19th of that. Um, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, for information purposes, is going on and taking place within our community at the St. Tammany Parish Fairgrounds. It's in Covington, right? That's correct. Yeah. They're having, what I told you about last week, they're having a hamburger festival. <laughs> the 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So if you want to, I have no idea what's going to be all involved with that. I just know it's at the St. Tammany Parish uh, fairgrounds in Covington uh, this coming weekend, so it's called the Hamburger Festival. And like I said, throughout the summer, they're probably going to have all kinds of festivals and stuff, and uh, this one's new to me as far as I've never heard of the Hamburger Festival. So there's probably more that's going to be coming. They so, had one day out of the month. One day out of the month, and that's what's happening, so it's a hamburger festival. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. Yes, and I'm not against it. It's good. Um, you can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Um, I just want to share with you that um, uh, Linda um, Slayton and the, and the family sent us a thank you card uh, to the church uh, for the memorial service that we held for Danny all the way back. It says, thanks to each and every one for all the prayers in the making. Danny, Danny Boy's celebration of his life here on earth is special. And I've gotten so many compliments on the memorial service, and I feel so blessed having all of you in my family, Miss Virginia, Linda, and the family. So again, I would like to say thanks to all who also provided and, and helped with that as well. It wasn't just one person doing everything, but it was a confirmation of many people from Bayou Baptist Church, and I want to thank each and every one too for doing that, and, and it was good and to um, have the celebration to remember uh, the life and the time of Danny Hall as well while he was here with us. Now Danny is in a much better place and walking the streets of gold in heaven. So, uh, so I just want to show that to you and I'll put it in the back. If you like, you can read it. I'll put it back in the foyer on the table as well. Any other announcements? Anything else that we may, may be going on or taking place? If nothing else, Mr. Al will come at this time and he'll lead us in another hymn, hymn number 156, Were You There? <laughs>
the back of your bulletins, we have a few prayers and requests and concerns, and I'd ask you to remember and to pray for the different people on our prayer list and continue to remember them in prayer. Um, continue to remember, of course, the Garrett family, Johnny, Debbie, uh, Mom, and Jake, all four of them have COVID. They're all getting uh, taking medication for it, so pray for all of them. Uh, as they're dealing with the COVID in their family. Also pray for Debbie Garrett's mom and sisters and other family members in Kentucky as well. So remember them also in prayer. Uh, pray for Janet and her upcoming surgery. No date on that yet, right? 23rd of May. 23rd of May. So remember you in prayer as that will be coming up. So I want to pray for her. Uh, continue to pray for my daughter, Melinda Burgess. And she has um, health issues that she too is uh, dealing with, so pray for her as well. Uh, pray for others as well. Uh, Cam, remember him in prayer. He has some places on his face that the dermatologist looks like Mr. Billy's going to be in your league. They're going to have to burn it. He said he I'm got some. With that. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were. That's why I figured I wanted to let you know you weren't the only one. Uh, so. It, it does, doesn't it? That son does, it. son does that, puts those spots, and so he's going to have to go to a dermatologist, and um, they're going to have to take a biopsy of one little spot and then probably burn it and, and, and deal with that. So remember Kim in prayer, and see he's going to be dealing with that. Uh, also pray for Miss Anna May as well. She She's having issues with her back, and how is she doing, Carrie? Is she doing better? Well, she now has kind of a virus, a oh. little bad cough. Oh, okay. I want to remember her in prayer then. Okay, pray for her with that. And also, again, she has from time to time problems with her hip or her, her back. So remember her in prayer with that. Uh, traffic mercies for many people who are traveling, I know. Um, remember them in prayer. Um, Brian's family, they traveled today from Kentucky. Is that right? Yeah, come back from a visit from visiting family members. So pray for them, Mandy. And Mom, Dad, and, uh, and, Brock, and uh, Logan, so pray for all of them as they're traveling back, um, and others as well who are traveling, so just traveling mercies for different ones who are traveling and who are away as well. Um, again, just continue to pray for the different people that we do have on our prayer list on a continual basis. Other prayer requests, concerns, thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share. Miss Sarah. Prayers, praises for that, prayers for that. Okay, absolutely. Always, always. Others, Dennis. I would just like to give thanksgiving for another lovely day, even though it is a little humid and hot. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, appreciate that. Ginger. Well, uh, another one traveling right now is Abby, so. Okay. Traveling versus Abby. Okay. She didn't have to travel really far, she was going to go for it. Travel is travel. Yes, it is. And so remember her. And also, Michael, you should be getting home sometime, maybe today or tomorrow. I don't know. But now, where's home for Michael now? It's in Texas, but never ask me where. I never That's lived okay. Yeah, that's all right. Tell me. He does. He lives in Texas. In Texas. Okay. I think he said, if I'm not mistaken, about a seven-hour drive from here. Okay. So, uh, but anyway. Um, so I mean, it could be almost family. anywhere from yeah. uh, in Texas. Thank you, and our family, and the Lord's been good to keep us from getting all this sickness and everything. Right, yeah. Around. So, yeah. Yeah. praise God for that, you know. Yeah. Because we have enough aids and pains otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and do, do, do be in prayer for the many, many people, it seems, who have uh, contracted this COVID virus. And, uh, and I guess there's, there's a good and a bad side to it. Uh, for the most part, many people, uh, it's not as, as bad as it first originally was and everything, but it still, it still presents problems and people still have to go on different medicines for it. So pray for the different people who are dealing with it and their families as well. Yes, Dennis. Uh, at the behest of Brandy, she has an interview tomorrow that's one way. And okay. she wants everybody to pray that she gets the job. Yes, Randy has an interview for a job, another type of job interview online, so she's going there. So we sure will, yes. 
Appreciate that. And also pray for Shell. When Shell, when your mom's supposed to get back? Well, she said she might come back for a day, but it's not going to be able to do that. So okay. Hopefully Saturday next week. Okay. So pray for Shell. She she's helping Pam with, with Pam's brother and, and helping with that. So so pray for for Shell and pray for Pam and pay, pray for Pam's brother as well as they are dealing with certain things in association with that. Um, other prayer requests or concerns or other things that you would like to share with us this morning. Ms. Renee. Just sure. Absolutely. How's everybody doing in Tennessee as well? Okay. Good. Good. Uh, also, remember, remember uh, Debbie Garrett's sister, Patty, as well, Patricia Patty. She is going to, if you hadn't happened already, she's supposed to have surgery, I think, on her legs. She's having issues with her legs. So pray for Debbie's sister here, Patty, because um, she is having some issues with her legs. So remember her in prayer also. Other other prayer requests? Any others or anyone else? Uh, Clarence. Uh, I, too, will be traveling this week, going to Main Charles for the Louisiana Emergency Management Conference and traveling back Thursday. Okay. Pray for you and all the others that are going to be there as well. Uh, in, in that area, so sure, sure will. Lake Charles, huh? Absolutely. I don't like that far from. Why don't you get past Baton Rouge to get to Lake Charles? But it's at the Golden Nugget. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's why I don't like it. I never stopped there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, but I just find that, that, to me, that, that drive from Baton Rouge when you get to Lake Charles is similar to when you go into Florida and you got that stretch of Florida and it's, it's just nothing. That's right. It, it's just desolate. It's like, man, am I ever going to get out of this place? But prayer, prayer, uh, probably mercy for you. When, when are you leaving? I'm going to leave for the Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, okay. So probably mercy for you and others as y'all do that. Jack? Yeah, I want to prayer of Thanksgiving for um, unspoken prayers. Sure. And also prayer of Thanksgiving that we're all here for. Thank you. Yes, appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. We're all here for that. Yes. Susie, how are things going, Susie? Ugh. Ah. <laughs> Love that answer. So he's like, you know, I'm well for a week, and like, everything's going great. And at 8.30 last night, it was like, I'm going to bed. Like, it was just cold or whatever it is, and then I'll go. I'll have it probably for five days, and then I'll be well. And I don't know. Well, Other just, than that, he's full. Oh, okay. good. Well, the week. <laughs> well, we'll keep you in prayer. Thank you. And she is healthy. She's from time to time. So keep Susie in prayer. We sure will. Um, anyone else? Uh, again, we, we have quite a few that are out this morning. Just pray for them and remember them in prayer. Um, and as always, pray for each other and remember each other in prayer during the course of the week. And, and as always, pray for the things that come up unexpectedly. I, 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 I mention this from time to time just so that you can be aware of it. You know, we always are prepared or we try to be prepared for things that we know are coming. But it's the things that we don't know. It's the things that hit us and take us by surprise. So always pray to the Lord and say, Lord, help us for the unexpected things that will come into our lives and help us in order to uh, deal with it. And, and I would tell you, if there are problems and if, if there are issues, don't sweep them under the rug. Deal with the problems or the issues at hand. Sweeping them under the rug or hoping they'll go away, they won't. You have to deal with them one way or the other. And giving it up to the Lord and then dealing with whatever is going on is the best way to do it. Because no matter what, they're not going to go away until you deal with it, the problem, whatever it may be. And so pray about it and don't think it will just go away by itself. Some things do. Pray for the Lord for guidance, for help, and for leadership as you journey in this life. There is a lot of things that's going on. Pray for our country, our state, our city, our leaders. Pray for that. Pray for them and pray for what all is going on. Right now, it, 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 it's a very uh, difficult time for a lot, a lot of people. Very difficult time. Uh, health issues, finance issues, a lot of things. 
uh, you know, people, you know, you, you look at, they're going to the grocery store and they're wondering, oh, wow, how in the world am I going to be able to afford all of this with everything going up? Uh, grocery list going up, gas prices going up, everything just seems to be skyrocketing. And it puts a lot of stress upon a lot of people. So, every day we need to ask the Lord to help us and to be with us as we journey in this life, as we deal with the stresses of life. It's like a roller coaster ride. It's up and down, up and down. And so, uh, so just pray to the Lord and ask Him for help, guidance, and leadership. And again, just pray for each other as well. And as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ in their hearts and in their lives. They know, know about Jesus intellectually. Pray they'll come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And as always, no matter how difficult things are or what you may be going through, always give thanks to the Lord for His grace, His mercy, and His love. It can and it could be a lot worse than what it is by His hand. This is what He allows. And there's always a reason as to why we go through things. So give thanks to the Lord. You know, Daniel, as I mentioned, he's one of my prime people that I always think about. Daniel was in captivity all of his life. Three times a day, he would give thanks to the Lord. He would pray to the Lord. And so, so should we pray to the Lord each and every day and ask him for help. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come now, Lord, we lift up all these prayers, all the concerns, the many things that are going on and the many things that are taking place in all of our lives. Lord, we lift up the many, many people who are dealing with different health issues and health problems. We pray for healing, for grace, for mercy, and for help in their life. Especially, Lord, the many people who are dealing with COVID at this time, be with them, and we pray for healing and for help and for comfort in their lives. For others who are dealing with other health issues, be with them, Lord, and help them as well. For those who are not with us, who are away, who are traveling or on the road, we pray for traveling mercies. Be with them, help them, and watch over them and give them a safe journey. And, Lord, help them to come back home as well. As other things are taking place throughout the world, we pray for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. We pray for our country, our state, our city, and our leaders. Be with all, Lord, who are involved with that. Be with those, Lord, who will be traveling in the coming week. Be watch over them and help them and give them a safe journey as well. And, and Lord, we, we pray for the many, many people, maybe who are in nursing homes, hospitals, and even in their own homes. Be with them and help them and watch over them as well. Again, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, and even the many unspoken prayers. We pray and we lift them all up and we ask for your help, for your grace, and for your mercy. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that truly does not know you as Lord and Savior, or who is listening and do not know you as Lord and Savior in their hearts and in their lives, I pray you'll open their hearts, open their eyes, open their ears, and Lord, that they may come to know you today as Lord and Savior. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes down. He'll lead us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 144. When I survey this wondrous cross. <clears throat> <clears throat>
God, as we come at this time, Lord, we want to thank you for your many, many blessings. Thanks for seeing to our needs. Thanks for helping us. Thanks for being with us, for watching over us, and for all the things, Lord, that you've done. So we come now at this time and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furnace of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Two sons. 
And then at the ripe age of 80 years old, God is calling Moses from this burning bush. And so we see here the call of Moses from the burning bush and the significance of it as well. Notice, first of all, in the first six verses of chapter 3 of Exodus, notice God appears unto Moses. Now Moses was tending flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Now this is not a godly priest. The priest of Midian was not from the godly line. You know, so you have to understand that. But he's there with his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire from within the bush. Now Moses saw that the bush was on fire, however, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, hmm, I will go over and see this strange sight as why this bush does not burn up and yet it is on fire. So when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, do not come any closer. Well, Moses said, here I am. And he told Moses, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, that is God, said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now this is, a, this is a miracle, to say the least, and something very difficult for Moses to comprehend and to put around his brain. Moses there, as he's tending his flock, 80 years old, he beholds a bush that was on fire, but yet it was not consumed. So he went, he goes over to the bush to figure it out. Now who would, I would have, and probably you would have too, any strange thing like this, a bush that's on fire, and yet it's not being burned up. It's strange. And, uh, and so from the bush, God calls Moses. Now this burning bush has at least three significant things that are taking place here. One, it was a picture of God, and it was to reveal the glory of God and his power, and yet not consume. See, it showed how God can do things, and yet the bush did not burn up. It shows the power of God. Secondly, it was a symbolic of the fire that was afflicted upon the people of Israel, who were going through such devastating times in Egypt, and yet they were not consumed. They continued in the faith. They continued on and hold on to what the promise of God was, that God would deliver them from Egypt. And so it shows the fire that they had, that they continued to have that fire and not be consumed by stress or other things as well. And then thirdly, the bush also illustrated Moses. It illustrated Moses, a humble shepherd, who with the help of God would become a fire that could not be put out. When he goes back to Egypt, he would be that fire. Even though we'll see later he makes all kinds of excuses as to why he could not. We will see he is a very strong fire person going up against Pharaoh. But yet he was still a humble person. Matter of fact, the word of God says that Moses was the most humble person in the world. That's amazing to say even for that. And then, and then out of all of that, what does God do? He identifies himself to Moses. Notice he says, I am the God of your father, Amram, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the patriarchs. Why did God identify himself to Moses? Well, for two, for two reasons I, I would like to believe. It's so that Moses could understand that God was not like the false gods that he grew up with or came to know in Egypt. 
There were many false gods, sun god, moon god, and many other gods as well. And he was not like that god. Also, it was to learn also that he was the god that he was told about, probably, by his mom, as he learned he was a Hebrew, that he was the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and also of his father and the Hebrews who were dwelling in the land of Egypt. So identification here was very important to God to give to Moses to let him know that he was. But also, if you notice as well, and it was to assure Moses of the covenant that he had made with Abraham, and he was fulfilling it. So Moses also learned that from this here we see as God told him, take off your shoes, this is holy ground. He is, he is learning here, unlike the other gods in Egypt, God is a holy and righteous God. And that here Moses is being told or being, or being taught by God that when he comes in the presence of God, he must show reverence and respect. Just like today, we come into the house of God. We should come in here with reverence and respect. Not that God is just here at Bayou Baptist Church or any other churches, but that God is always here. And that when we come before God to worship Him, we must reverence Him with honor and respect. And let's not treat Him like all of these other false gods, because he is nothing like those other gods as well. You know, many passages throughout the Bible tells of the respect and the reverence that we should pay honor to Jehovah God. In Psalm chapter 5 and in verse 7, here the word of God so proclaims, I by your great mercy will come into your house, in reverence and will bow down towards you in your holy temple. You see, in reverence. And then in Daniel as well, the, the king there recognized something about Daniel's God. After Daniel was released from the lion's uh, den, when, when Daniel was put into the lion's bed, den, and God preserved him, here's what King Darius mentioned concerning Jehovah God. In Daniel chapter 6 and in verse 26, he says, King Darius issued this decree. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues, he saves, he performs signs and wonders, but in heaven and on earth, he has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So even King Darius, a heathen, recognized we must pay honor and respect to Jehovah God. And then also, in the New Testament, it also proclaims as well, in Hebrews chapter 12 and in verse 28 and following, there too it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let's be thankful and so worship God, acceptable, how? With reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. So you see, it's very significant here that God is revealing himself to Moses from this fire his power, his might, but yet the awesomeness of God and what God can do. I believe today that this is why maybe there are so many people who are maybe missing out on God's blessings or God's guidance or God's help or whatever the case may be is due to the lack of respect and honor due to Jehovah God. You know, they treat God like a mere man or like one of the other false gods around, and he should not be, you know. I know people don't mean anything by it, but it really cringes me 
whenever I hear people say, well, you know, the man upstairs. He's not the man upstairs. I mean, if that's the way you feel, I'm sorry. But he's not, he's not man. He's not human. He is Jehovah God who created you man. I was not, I did not create myself. He, he always was and always will be. So, I mean, I know people don't really mean maybe that much respect, but it is a disrespect when I hear somebody say, the man upstairs. It, it really, it really irks me. I don't really tell people anything because I don't know what they mean by, not by it, but they need to understand the truth. He is Jehovah God. He is the creator. He is the one that formed us out of the ground and created us and breathed into us the breath of life. We are the clay. He's the potter. He created us. He is God. Give him the respect and, and honor due to his name because of who he is. And not only because of who he is, but also because of what he has done. He has sent his only son to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. And that our redemption, our salvation, is because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his son, whom he sent. And he didn't have to, but he did it. And you know why he did it? It says because he loved not that we deserve the love, but it says because he loved, and he did. So give God, Jehovah God, the respect and honor due to his name because of who he is and what he has done as well. Secondly, God not only appeared unto Moses, but notice God appoints Moses. Eighty years old now. And God's appointing him. Notice what God tells him after Moses here as he's looking on this burning bush and he hides his face thinking he's seen God, which he has not. He's seeing the flames coming out and not being consumed. And as God is speaking to him from the bush, and the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people Egypt. In Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So, I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hittites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you, Moses, to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Amazing. Eighty years old, tending sheep, minding his own business. And here God calls him out of this burning bush. And God relates to him, I have seen, I have heard, I know what's going on, and now I have come down personally. I have personally come, and now I have come to deliver them through you. Now, did Moses ever wonder if the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his father really cared, really knew, really saw, and now God tells him, I have seen all, I have done all these things. I have seen it. I have heard it. I know firsthand what the people are going through and have going through. Even today, God knows what we are all going through. He knows our plight. He knows our struggles. He knows what's taking place in all of our lives. Don't think that God doesn't know all that is going on throughout the world. He is. He is in control. And he has seen all the things, just as he has seen what is going on with his people Israel. And so now, as he speaks to Moses, now was the time to deliver the people out of slavery. And Moses, of all people, would be the one to bring them out of slavery into the promised land. 
Amazing. What is God doing here? God is using human instrument, Moses. An imperfect human instrument. Moses was not perfect by any means or any stretch of the imagination. Let's not, let's not say, oh, he was, yes, he was a special person from birth, but he was not perfect. There were many things as he looked back on his life that he saw. And also, God uses imperfect vessels always to accomplish his work on earth. And we're all imperfect vessels. There is no one who is perfect. There is no one who is without sin. But yet God calls us to do his work and his bidding as well. Also, what God is doing here, he's keeping his promise that he told to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, in verse 13 and following, here is the conversation that God so related to Abraham when he made a covenant with him as well. He says, Then the Lord said, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country, Egypt, and not their own. And he goes on to tell them, And they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. See, God told Abraham prior to this, this is what's going to happen. But, I will punish the nation that serves that they serve as slaves, and afterwards, when they come out, they will come out with great possessions. As he, as he so tells them this, he says, But you, however, you will go to your fathers in peace and be buried in good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sins of the Amorites have not yet reached this full measure. See, so where Abraham was when God gave him this covenant, was in the promised land, was in the land of Canaan. And so they went back, and now they were enslaved for over 400 years. And God was going to deliver the people out, just as he had promised Abraham. 80 years in the making of Moses' life. And he was the one that God so chose to be his vessel. This is why when Jehoshaphat looked down to him and knew he was, he was no ordinary baby, God was revealing to her that indeed he was someone that God was going to use later on. Now she probably had no idea to what extent, and I don't think Moses, maybe Moses did, but he thought it was going to be through his work, and I'll show you that in a minute. But God was going to use Abraham for his work. So now, what we see, the prince of Egypt, 80 years old, was going back to discharge the demands of God for his people to the very person, to the very person who persecuted and enslaved the people of God in Egypt. To redeem a people belonging to God, and God was going to send the prince back, not as a prince, but as a prophet, and a deliverer, God's prophet. What such an awesome thing that was going to take place. Now you would have thought, Moses said, wow, okay, I always knew this. I knew I was going to do this one day. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And you would think Moses would say, hey, awesome God, I'm going now. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do it, right? No, he, no. Look, look at, look at, notice how God has to assure Moses. Look at what Moses does say. Look at Moses at the excuses Moses also makes as well. As God says, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out. In verse 11, but Moses said to God, whoa, wait a minute. Who am I that I should go back to Pharaoh and bring Israel out of Egypt? And God says, I'll be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, wait now, suppose I go to the Israelites and they say to me, the God of your fathers has sent you, and they ask me, what is your name? Then what shall I tell them? First excuse, right? God said to Moses, I am what I am, and that is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. God, God said to Moses, Say to the Israelite, the Lord, the God of your fathers, 
the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, has sent you. This is my name forever, the name of which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. So he says, go and I want you to assemble the leaders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of, it, of, of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you. I have seen what you have done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of Canaan, the Hittite, the Amazite, the Perizzite, Hittite, the Jebusites, and all of that. The elders, and, the elders, uh, and he says, the elders will listen to you. You and the elders are the going the king and say to him, The Lord your God, the God of the Hebrew, has met with us and let us take a three days journey. And so in chapter 4, Moses makes all kinds of excuses as to why he is not the one that I that, that should be done with everything. I mean, he, he, he does, he makes all these excuses. What if this? Well, I, wait, I'm not an eloquent speaker. I can't do this and I can't do that. And I can't. He made so many excuses. So 40 years ago, though, Moses was ready to deliver the Israelites all by himself. I feel as though back then he was probably cocky and arrogant. You know, we, we get this little tidbit from, from Stephen as he, as he relates to his fellow Jews over in Acts chapter 7 and in verse 23 and following. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow Israelites. That's why he was still in Egypt. He saw one of them being mistreated by the Egyptians, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that, he, that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came up to two Israelites who were fighting, and he tried to reconcile them. And he says, brothers, don't you know you're hurting each other? And they said, wait a minute. They said, the man who's mistreating the other said to him, what made you rule and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And when Moses heard this, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. You see, when Moses was 40 years old, he says, I'm the one who's going to deliver y'all. But it wasn't time yet. There was still 40 more years to go. See, it wasn't, the time has not reached its fulfillment according to God's prophecy. So, here we see that God is sending Moses now to do what he wanted to do 40 years ago. And Moses doesn't agree with God. You got the wrong person. Don't you understand? I'm not an eloquent speaker. I can't do this. The people won't believe me. This won't happen. This, I mean, one excuse after the other. God was there. And, and Moses didn't agree with God's choice. He made all kinds of excuses of why he shouldn't go back and deliver God's people. But what did God do? God assured Moses that he, God, was going to be with him, that he wasn't going alone, as he told him. No, he says, I am going to be there with you, verse 12. I will be with you. I'm going to be with you. In other words, you see, God wasn't just on that mountain. As many people think that God is only in the church, he's not. He's everywhere. God goes wherever we go. So God, God was going to send Moses back to Egypt. And where was God going to be? In Egypt with him. And we know God led the people of Israel. And so God said, I'm going to be with you. I am is sending you. And this is what you need to tell the people. I am has sent you. Moses looked at himself, I believe, and at his failures, his weaknesses, and yet God was going to give him the ability, the powers, and the means by which he was to accomplish the work that God wanted him to do. You see, what Moses needed to understand 40 years ago was it wasn't by Moses' power that it was going to happen. It was going to be by God's power. Amen. God was going to do everything and work through him as well and work to him and give him the ability and the power. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul realized the same thing as well as Moses did. 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8 and following, or back, back up to verse 7, it says, to keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations that he had, they, they were given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. So three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I, Paul, will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in the weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For, where I, for when I am weak, then I am strong. And his strength came from the Lord. Isn't that a paradox? Where I am weak, there I am strong. Because you see, you can't rely upon your own power. And this is where we fail so many times in our own lives. We try to rely upon our power and our strength, and we try to do it ourselves, rather than relying upon the power and the might of our great and awesome God, through Jesus Christ. You see, and we fail every time. See, God was telling Moses and teaching Moses, yes, you're going to be the deliverer, but you're not going to do it in your power. You're going to do it in mine. I, my power will be revealed. And indeed it was. Even the staff that he had in chapter 4, he says, you see the staff, put it on the ground. What happened? It became a snake. He wanted to show him the power, and he did this also. And even the many things that took place throughout with the plagues in Egypt, it was to reveal the power and the might of Jehovah God. And do you know that that particular power that took place in Egypt do you know years and years later when Joshua by the power of God defeated the people of Jericho and the walls came crumbling down? Do you know why Rahab assisted the spies? It's because she heard, not seen now, she heard the tales of what took place in Egypt with Moses and the plagues. She heard about the power and the might of God and believed in the power of God. And she herself, Rahab, became a believer. And this same Rahab married one of the Israelites. They had a son. The son was named Boaz. And Boaz married Ruth. Now you know the rest of the story concerning Rahab and what took place, how she became child belonging to the Lord. And all because she didn't see it with her eyes. She heard about God's awesome power. And she believed it. Not just here. She believed it here in her heart. And she believed it with all of her heart. And she knew that this was a, a great and awesome God. And this is what Moses was going to be taught as well. So all these times. So again, many times in our own lives, we feel weak or maybe inadequate. And maybe we, think, maybe we make all kinds of excuses. And the reasons are is that we're not relying upon the might and the power of the Lord. As he told us to, and probably you're familiar with what is said in the Word of God in Ephesians chapter 6 and all of chapter 6, but especially in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against each other. He says not against flesh and blood. That means not against each other but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. See, we forget that, again, we're in a battle. We have been in a battle, and we will be in a battle until the Lord comes back with Satan and all of his forces and what he may throw at us, but we can be strong. And then what Peter also learned and so subscribed to the people as well in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, 
that he may lift you up in due time and cast all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. See, we don't do that. We're trying to do it. We're trying to handle it ourselves. See, pride comes in the way. Oh, foolish people. Get rid of the pride. Humble yourself before God and ask Him for help, grace, and for mercy. And He will deliver. And He will help in so many ways. And did not Jesus tell His own disciples as well before He sent them out and before He died on the cross? Did He not also tell them as well from John chapter 15? As he, as he so says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit, on what? Unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. But you know what happens? Pride gets in the way. We become arrogant. We think, oh, I can do that. No. The Lord is doing it. He has given us the ability to do it. All the things that even I so do, I testify here. Everything that I do is not by my power. It's by the ability and the might of the Lord. I was like Moses. I ran from the Lord when he called me into the ministry. I vividly know what he, Moses went through. I said the same things that Moses so said as well. I can't speak. I'm not very well educated. I can't do these things. No, I told the Lord, you got the wrong person. And I told him, I ain't doing it. Oh, no. I did. You can ask my wife. No lie. I did for five years. And I'm going to tell you what, you, you were looking at the most unhappiest person in all the world for five years. And I had a good job, I had everything good, going good. I was, I was miserable. I mean miserable. And I knew God had called me into it, but I didn't want to do it. I didn't feel qualified. I didn't feel like I was able. And God basically just said the same thing. I will give you the good. I will enable you to do it. And I will dare say, anything that we've done is by the power and the might of God. He has given me and given us the ability, the power, and the might in which to do things. A branch out of, con out of contract or out of connection with the vine is lifeless and useless. But as long as we remain in the vine, we become useful and also God has something in store for us to do. Even if it's a small thing to do. Don't think that it, don't think it's any that we that we have called to make big things. Not everyone is called to be a Billy Graham or Charles Stanley or John MacArthur or all these other. You know, we're here to do the things that God would have us to do, even if it's just small things. And if God is saying, I want you to do this. And even if you say, well, it seems insignificant. It seems small. Hey, listen, sometimes the small, insignificant things, you'll be surprised of how much that works in a person's life and what can happen as well. See, with God, as you've heard, all things are possible, and he does the impossible as well. And we should always look to that. And always remember, especially what he says concerning with us as well in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and in verse 7. But we have these treasures and jaws of clay. We are the clay. We have these jaws of treasures of clay to show what? That all surpassing power is from God and not from us. See, what God does in our lives. It's to, it's to glorify and to bring glory to Him. But it all begins with the relationship with Jesus Christ. As you see, Christ did it all for us at the cross. So the question is, is do you know Jesus Christ? 
that your Lord and Savior. Because it begins there, just as Jesus told his disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We can do all things through Jesus Christ. And it begins with a relationship. The question is, is do you know him? If not, come know him today. Give your heart and your life to him today. Let us stand. Almighty God, as you have so given us your words and showed us from your word concerning with Moses, and I'm sure many others as well, if there's any here today that has truly not given their heart and their life to you, I pray they will. Or maybe there is something that you are calling them to do, and they are thinking to themselves, now, now, the Lord, help them to understand and to see that it's not by their power, but by your power that you're calling them, and that they're able to do it, if indeed it is by you, and that if they indeed rest upon your power and your strength and your might. And so, Lord, if there's any here today whom you are speaking to, I pray they will come unto you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. So if God has spoken to you today, you come as we sing our invitation hymn, hymn number 309. Lord, I'm coming home. Moses, he's gone back to get his people. The Lord has called us to do things as well. 309.
as this Wednesday we'll have our prayer meeting and our Bible study uh, from 6.30 to 7.30 and prior to that from 6 o'clock on we'll have our, our food and our fellowship. Uh, if you are thinking about or wanting to bring something, um, please let me know at least by Tuesday if you are bringing anything. But also let me say that you don't have to bring anything and don't feel like you're required to or if you have to or if you think, well, you know, they do. No, what I really want is for people just to come to have Bible study and fellowship on Wednesday night. You know, coming from 6 o'clock to 6.30 gives us a little time of having fellowship with each other. You know, because it is hard to have fellowship when we have a Bible study from 6.30 to 7.30 because we're in the Word of God. But I want people to come. So don't feel obligated or thinking that you have to bring something. Just bring yourself and your Bible and, 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 and so we can get into the Word of God at 6.30. But you come if you'd like and, and join us in the fellowship as we have food and fellowship from about 6 o'clock to 6.30 and all are welcome to come for that. If not, we invite you to come back next Sunday. We have Bible study from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, different classrooms for everyone. And then worship time from 10.30 on to where everybody can come and worship God in spirit and in truth to where we give reverence and honor to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us at Calvary. I will put this thank you card in the back if you'd like to read it and look at it if you can. This again is from Linda and from uh, the family and all thanking us for memorial service and for what we've done here at Bayou Baptist Church. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. And as you journey this week, you pray for the different people, pray for each other, and remember those who are dealing with different health issues and health problems, whatever may be going on. COVID, or whatever else may be, whatever else, health issues, pray for them. For those who are traveling, pray for traveling mercies. And again, just pray for each other. And as always, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ. Pray for their soul, and pray that they may come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and as Savior. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. Now, lead us in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for the strength that you give us to go each day. I pray, Lord, and thank you for each one that is here. And I pray that each one has received the blessing. And again, I pray, Father, if there's someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that at least the seed has been. Be with us now, Lord, if we go our separate ways. Bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious.